Hello and welcome to the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. In this episode, we're going to talk about S-Flow setup and configuration on Brocade devices. Uh, so the way S-Flow works is it samples data off of your edge ports uh, and sends that off to a central collector. There can be multiple collectors. You can send uh, that data up to five collectors for redundancy as well as for multiple different purposes. Uh, and we support IPv4 and v6. So what can you do with that data? Well, you can send it for monitoring. You can also send it to a security application. You could send it to an SDN application. You can use it for uh, telemetry. Multiple things can be used for it. And because it's on a sampled basis and not a one-to-one -one packet capture, you can turn it on and leave it on on your edge ports and uh, constantly monitor and build reports. So um, for, from a collection perspective, you can use Brocade Network Advisor, which is obviously our preferred method, which is our, our network management platform. You could also use something like Inmon or NTOP or What's Up Gold or SolarWinds um, as a collector. Or uh, even from a security perspective, you could use something like Arbor Networks uh, and send that S-Flow data off to Arbor, and then Arbor could uh, apply policies to the, to the edge ports. Um, so this is a, a brief example of what it would look like in Brocade Network Advisor, a, an S-Flow report. So in this case, you know, you can see not just the utilization of an edge port or what MAC address we've learned in that edge port, but we can see the, all of the flows or the majority of the flows on those ports. So we can see the source and destination IP address uh, or MAC address. You can see the protocol. So is it, you know, is it ARP? Is it... Um, uh, we see BP, spanning tree BPDUs there. We see UDP and TCP packets. Uh, we could see the QoS bits being used. The in port and out ports are the physical switch ports. Um, we can see if it's ICMP or TCP or UDP and the source and destination ports on those. Um, if you're using 802.1x, you can see the source, uh, the, the username that's being used, uh, how many frames and how many megabytes are in that flow. So you can get this data relatively real time and it's stored in a SQL database in our case. So you can query that and you can say, I want a report to show me everything that went from this port to this port, you know, from this day to this day. And it's going to generate that report, which you can export into an Excel document if you wish. Um, so, you know, uh, there's, you know, it's built into the ASICs, so it doesn't take any CPU utilization to collect those samples, but it does take CPU utilization because it takes those samples and sends them off to a collector. So you just need to be a little bit careful of your sample rate. If you're sampling too often, then it's going to, you know, use too much CPU power. So for example, a line rate 10 gig port is nearly 15 million packets per second. Um, and so if you were trying to collect samples from 15 million packets a second and send them off to, to a collector, obviously that would not work well, right? The CPU would be overloaded on the switches and it would defeat the whole purpose of monitoring. So um, you can use, uh, usually the, the default sample rate on the port is probably adequate in most cases, but you can um, increase or decrease that sample rate depending on whether you want to um, collect more or less often off of that port. So let's have a look at how that gets configured. So we will uh, hop over to my terminal here, go into uh, config T. Uh, so there's three required parameters. One is you need to set an S-Flow destination or multiple destinations, but you need at least one. You need to enable S-Flow globally. Uh, and then you need to turn on S-Flow on the ports that you want to collect samples from. So those are the required parameters, and then there's multiple other things you can do. So first we'll set an S-Flow destination, and it's just the IP address of wherever you're sending it to. So I'm just going to use 1.1.1.1. Um, and then you can actually change the uh, the UDP port if you want. So um, S-Flow S-Flow samples are sent as UDP, so there's no ACK that comes back, right? So um, if those packets get lost on the way, they're not going to resend, so so they'll be lost forever. So you just need to be a little bit careful. Make sure that your firewall has UDP port uh, 6343 open as a destination, and if it doesn't, you can change that uh, either the destination port or the source port or both in order to pass it through. But 
um, you know, be aware that, that by default it's UDP and it's uh, 6343, but you know, so we'll just leave it at the default. So I hit enter on that. It tells me I've added a collector. Um, then I can do an S flow enable to turn it on globally. And the last required parameter, I need to go to my interfaces I want to collect from. So we'll say 111 to 1124. Um, and um, we can do an S flow forwarding here, which just tells it to collect samples. So the other thing I can do from this perspective is I can do an uh, S flow sample. So I can change the sample rate here. And this is on a per port basis how often you're collecting, right? So the range is from 256 to uh, whatever that is, 16 million. Uh, so the default is 496. So one out of every 4,096 packets is going to be sampled. And obviously, statistically, the more samples, the more packets you have, the more accurate your sample rate is. So over time, that sample rate gets very, very accurate. Uh, but, you know, at the beginning, it's going to be less accurate. However, it also pulls you know, uh, statistics and, and samples off those, not just the packet header. Um, so we're going to leave that as the default. Um, and then drop out of here. Uh, so from an SLO perspective, there's many, many things that we can, we can configure. So we could configure the agent IP, so our sending IP, uh, the destination IP we already looked at. Um, you can set the maximum packet size, so how much we're, we're collecting, uh, the polling interval, so how often we're sending to the collector, uh, the global sample rate, if you want that to be different than the per packet sample rate. Um, you could set the source interface, so if you wanted to come from a loopback or from a VE or from a physical interface or whatever the case, um, you can change the source port. So by default, it's, uh, uh, it's port 8888 UDP is the source port. Uh, but you can change that to anything you want again if you have a specific firewall rule um, in the version here so we default to version 5 you can set it back to version 2 if you want but version 5 is highly recommended so but anyway we, we have our three things that we need to make this work so um, to see if it's actually sending uh, SFL samples we'll do a show SFL so in the show SFLOW output, we can see it's version 5 here. We can see SFLOW uh, services are enabled. Here's my agent IP. Um, here's my source. So if you would have specified a particular source or a particular IPv6 source, uh, here's the collector IP and, and ports. Um, here's the, the UDP source port, which is saying it's default. The polling interval is 20 seconds, just at the default. Here's the configured and the actual sampling, sample rate, so one out of every 4,096 packets. So obviously, as you, um, as you decrease this number, so if this number I changed to 2,048, that means that it's sampling more often and therefore using more CPU resources. So the lower that sample rate is numerically, the higher the sample rate or the more often we sample and the higher the CPU utilization. Um, so here's the maximum sample size, um, and then we can see here how many that we are actually are collecting and exporting packets. So we've actually exported uh, 25,000 UDP packets since uh, since I turned that on. I've got a lot of traffic in this switch that I'm on, uh, and then. Um, Here's how many I've collected. So there can be multiple samples in an exported packet, right? It, it's not just a one sample per export. It, you, can, you can collect multiple. Uh, we can see what it's turned on for. And then um, on a per port basis, we can see, you know, whether it's turned on and then what it's configured and what its actual sample rates are. So we can see that, you know, I've turned it on for 24 ports, and so it's defaulting to 4,096. So those can obviously be different than the global sample rate, completely up to you. And obviously, the faster the interface is, so if you had, um, if you had a 40 gig port or a 100 gig port, you need to uh, 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 address that sample rate and make sure you're not sampling too often. Uh, the default sample rates are usually fine, and you can turn it on and leave it on for all the ports. But just have a look at your CPU once in a while and make sure that you know it's. Uh, it's within a reasonable amount and it's not uh, detrimental to the, to the switch performance. So that's about it. Uh, thanks for joining.